Hey, Prime members, have you heard? You can listen to your favorite podcasts ad free. Good news! With Amazon Music, you have access to the largest catalog of ad free top podcasts included with your Prime membership. To start listening, download the Amazon Music app for free or go to amazon.com slash ad free podcast. That's amazon.com slash ad free podcast to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Hi, everybody. Cheryl Atkinson here. Welcome to another edition of Full Measure After Hours. Today, a Michigan plant exemplifies the national debate over foreign-owned companies providing jobs in the U.S. versus the national security risk. This story is interesting because it represents similar themes that are taking place across the country. In Michigan, a major company is promising to build a brand spanking new factory, invest billions, and bring in more than 2,000 jobs. And it just so happens it could change the fortune of one of the state's poorest areas. So it would seem to be a no-brainer for the small township, Green Charter Township. This is about an hour's north of Grand Rapids, Michigan. It's situated in one of Michigan's poorest regions. But the plans for this factory, which will make electric car battery components, is upending local politics and exemplifies the national debate over foreign-owned companies providing jobs in the U.S. versus the national security risk of that. So the plant is going to be built right now by a company called Goshen to make parts for lithium carbonate electric car batteries. In this podcast today, you'll hear a little bit about both sides in the debate, Bruce Borkovich is running for a township supervisor position nearby where the factory is to be built. He's against the giant factory for national security reasons. But first, you'll hear from Chuck Thalen, who is for the plant. He will be its general manager. You can clear this up off the top. Does Goshen Incorporated have any Chinese ties? Goshen Inc. is a wholly owned subsidiary of Goshen High Tech, which is based out of China. Um, our ownership is comprised of stockholders, and VW is our largest stockholder. Is there any Chinese ownership? There has to be, I guess, if they're based in China. The, yeah, the founder of the company, has, he's the second highest stockholder, so he is Chinese. What would but, you but, but there's no ownership from the PRC or government entity. It's all private. Okay. <clears throat> When you say there's no ownership by the Communist Chinese Party, we always hear that it's not possible to have a complete separate entity if this is a business that's in China. There has to be some connection to the party and the government. They have rules and regulations like any other country, which we abide by the rules of every country where we're at. Just there's tend to be a little stiffer. Is there uh, but they do not own, own or operate the company. Um, and there are no political decisions made for business case. Well, uh, our last interview, the former town official that helped, you know, get the get the plant coming in and so on, he did say there were these confusing, this confusing policy and what would be considered the Articles of Incorporation that seems to require some sort of allegiance to the Chinese Communist Party. Can you explain that? Certainly. The Articles of Incorporation, which there are two laws, uh, the most recent, I think it was 2017, uh, that are in China that you have to allow for the Communist Party to assemble in your pace of business if you have three or more employees that work there that are CCP members. That's what it refers to. Does that concern you or should it be of concern to the community? I've never seen or heard any um, ideals expressed by the management or the people working in this company. So no, it does not concern me. What do you think is behind the fear and the distaste for the idea of a plant being here among those in the community who oppose it. There are some extremists that use some pretty malicious misinformation tactics to, to recruit. Um, I think the core of the fear is some kind of fear of communism. And for some reason, I don't understand. You have 269 companies right now in the state of Michigan with Chinese home, and there's never been an issue. Goshen's been in the United States for 10 years. We've never been cited for any infraction or any kind of suspicion of anything. So why is there suspicion now or, or fear? I have no idea. Um, is this an issue that is divided on party lines? Is it fair to say we are in a Republican dominant area right now? I think what I read is this area is basically 70% Republican. 
which is good because Republican nominee President Trump is inviting our company to localize in the state of Michigan. And but does opposition cut along party lines? Is it Republicans support the plant? Democrats are against it. How does that work out? That's a good from what I see. You've got the 5% swing on both ends, right? And those are the extremists that always have their opinion. The 90% in the middle, they're, they're pretty apathetic. They, they don't really care either way. However, I met numerous times, I was met again today at Myers. I stopped there quick before I came and somebody said, aren't you Chuck Thalen? Yes, I am. They said, please don't give up on us. We really need this here. So party lines, I don't think so because both parties support the onshoring of, of manufacturing. In sort of bullet, pr bullet um, form, if you can, can you name the top couple of points that would benefit this town that you talk about when you tell people they should support it? This county is the third poorest in the state of Michigan and has been as long as I've been paying attention. Uh, the amount of working level people that have to have public assistance afterwards. So if you have two parents working at home, uh, on the end of the month, they go to Mana Pantry to get food for their children because they're employed, but they're underemployed. So what we're bringing to this area is a, a better economic affluency, in my opinion. Um, we're starting our salaries roughly 24, 50 an hour, which far exceeds what you see in this area. Uh, bullet point number two, what do we bring to the area? Community um, involvement. Um, I've already made multiple donations to multiple charities that I feel strongly about, that, that some of my employees feel strongly about, and those have been well received. Um, I guess third, uh, the technical advancement of this industry is happening, no matter what people want to think. And this positions Ferris State University to be on the forefront. See, they're also getting a number of grants to become the technical hub for EV in Michigan, where you have the other colleges that are more of the theoretical hub. What is the status of the project? Is there anything at this point that could stop it? There's always something that could stop anything, but right now the status is moving forward. As I was mentioning on the drive in, we're doing our, our groundwater study right now. When that's complete, that goes to the architectural engineers and the civil engineers drop the final site plan. Then we already have all the other documentation ready. We just need that site plan to submit all of our permits to Michigan Eagle and the EPA. And then if there's not a good answer to this, don't worry about trying to come up with one. But does this situation that you've been dealing with say anything on a national level about what's going on in this country in terms of businesses? And does it reflect on anything in your view beyond this town? I think it shows us that sometimes like the election cycle that we're in, people get more hung up on politics than what's right for their community. And I'd like to see more of a community focus. Okay. Anything else you want to say? Yeah, is there anything I left out that you'd like to be sure we know? Um, maybe also mention, as I mentioned in the car, Goshen is being questioned as to whether or not we're going to be a, a, a bad thing for the state and for the United States. Recall, we've already gone through the CFIUS, voluntarily submitted for the CFIUS review. There were no negative findings. And the CFIUS review is the foreign business review that the government requires to be conducted, as, right. if US I'm Depart right about that. Right, right. U U.S. Department of Treasury does their evaluation, and the response was that it doesn't even fall within the purview because we don't meet the requirements. Okay, the other thing that we've done is we were selected by the Department of Energy in 2019 to execute a $3.1 million project to develop new materials to be used in the United States for battery construction. So we've already been vetted by both CFIUS, the Department of Treasury, and U.S. CAR, which is the Department, Department of Energy. So the Department of Energy is actually using this firm that has some Chinese connections for something that it said is okay to do. There's Certainly. no threat, no risk. Yeah. We actually led a team, which included companies like Stellantis, General Motors, Ford, as they're going through the battery development specifically for cathode material and electrolyte. So we led that activity using our labs. We paid for half, they paid for half. We got a benefit from it too. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, the DOE and the US Department of Treasury has no problem with us being here. And both presidential candidates have invited us to be here. So I don't understand why you have these rogue people trying to stop the project. All right, let's be real. If you're a content creator, blogger, or an entrepreneur just getting started, the last thing you want to do is spend hours building a website. That's where Bluehost comes in. Their AI tools make custom WordPress sites in minutes. No coding, no stressing. You also get built-in marketing and e-commerce tools to grow your business. And with faster loading, you can secure the bag without the lag. 
It's never been easier to launch your website. Go to bluehost.com now to get started. Forget one size fits all diets. With Noom, you get a personalized weight loss plan that's tailored to your lifestyle. Have cravings? Food FOMO? Noom can help you lose weight while still enjoying your favorite foods. Noom's users love the flexible approach, blending psychology and biology to help you lose weight in a way that's sustainable for you. Plus, you can rest assured Noom's approach is grounded in science. They've published more than 30 peer-reviewed scientific articles describing their methods and effectiveness. Stay focused on what's important to you with Noom's psychology and biology-based approach. Sign up for your trial today at Noom.com. So it really is a story of local politicians who forgot about the will of the people. The county commissioners here, who many who have just been replaced in the primary, um, unanimously passed the resolution in support of Goshen. The township supervisor where I'm at was in strong support of it. And no one uh, really decided to stop, slow down, and find out what the people want. Now, eventually that happened. In Green Charter Township, a survey was done. 77.7% of the people uh, didn't want Goshen. Uh, the township adjacent here to the west, it was almost 90% and countywide, I feel pretty safe, at least 65 to 70% of the people don't want it. So, so really in a paragraph, this is a story about local elected officials who came down with political amnesia and decided they know what's good for me. If I'm understanding it correctly, regardless of what people may want, if a company meets all the rules, there can't be a special dispensation that says that company can't build here. Is that right? Well, yes and no. Uh, right now, uh, uh, John Molinar is doing a fantastic job. He's heading a committee really looking at this. So yes, there are certain uh, uh, criteria that have to be met, certain conditions have to be met. And those are met regardless of demographics of the company, whether they're uh, from this country or other. But we have many credible very credible sources who say that the Chinese government, not the Chinese people, we're not against the Chinese people, but the Chinese government is a threat to our existence. And in particular, if this plant is built, they will are certain that it will be used to attack our cybersecurity and our intellectual property. Not likely or highly likely, they are certain that that will happen. Do you think your background in law enforcement makes you even more sensitive to such a complaint? I think I do. I, you know, I retired as a police chief at a university and I was the emergency manager for the university. And it does make me sensitive to that. I have uh, a daughter and grandchildren here. I just came from swimming with my grandchildren before I came here. And uh, this, is, this is home for us. This is our last stop. We love it here. We really can't afford to go anywhere else. This, this is it. This is our last stop and I'm very concerned uh, I have strong environmental concerns, but really those concerns for safety and security are paramount for me. With so much sentiment against the plant, has there been any organization that's helped try to step in and back it? Are there environmental groups that are coming in and helping with this or who else is helping? Absolutely flabbergasted that there, I, you, you hear nothing for the environmental groups. And listen, you're talking about a several million square foot plant in the middle of agricultural country in the watershed for the Muskegon River, just the point source pollution alone is considerable. Point source pollution is, you know, when that car is parked in this driveway, eventually it pollutes a little bit. It leaks some oil or gas or something. And everything that happens at a factory that size eventually washes off into storm sewers or just off paved areas and into our environment. And we've heard virtually nothing, you know, from the green movement or from environmental groups. I thought they'd be all over this. And this is a, a, a fight we're all alone. Uh, thank God for Congress and Molinar, Joe Sella and others who have come really to join into the fight. But it's this core group. Uh, Jason Cruz is one of the, the leaders here who sacri he and his family have sacrificed so much. This is a a little we the people thing, but it's a strong group. Is there any way you see at this point that the plant might be stopped or do you think it goes forward? Well, I think uh, I have a prediction and this is based on nothing. Uh, uh, I have a prediction 
they'll decide not to build it here. Um, I think they're right now waiting for some things. I think they're waiting for the local elections because if the Green Township Board completely changed, I think the momentum would really go forward with the plant. And I think they're waiting for the presidential election. But right now we're not hearing much from them. So um, we're gonna fight this to the end. If we lose, we can all hold our heads high and know we fought, but I don't think what we hear in town is, oh, it's a done deal. I don't think it's a done deal. How do you see the presidential election potentially impacting this? I think President Trump would really drill down, take a look at this and, and listen to all the national security experts who, and I'm sure he already knows this much better than me, what a threat the CCP is to our existence. And, uh, you know, uh, their leader was quoted as saying one point in history, uh, or not too long ago, that they'll, they'll take us over and never fire a shot. And you know that's I think that's that's their plan, and in many ways they're more strategic than we are, and maybe smarter than we are. Um, so I, I really think uh, a, a Donald Trump presidency uh, will change the tide on these things happening on our soil. The other side says that both Donald Trump and the Biden administration and the governor have all invited in these sorts of projects. Yeah, I I, I think Donald Trump spoke in some generalities. I don't think he was specifically addressing what is coming in here. Um, I think President Biden is invited in. Governor Whitner, lock, stock and barrel, sold her soul to the devil, sold her soul to anyone uh, to advance her cause. This is, this is something, you know, another case of a politician deciding what's good for me up in Big Rapids Township in a green township in the middle of farm country and deer hunting country. And uh, my disappointment and disgust for Governor Whitmer in particular is uh, I might have a grandchild or my daughter might listen to this, so that's probably all I'm going to say. How do you explain the Republicans who had backed the project and subsequently got voted off the board? Yeah, so, you know, I, 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 listen, I think there's a basic uh, fundamental of, of conservatism that we believe in business. We believe in uh, businesses taking care of people rather than government taking per, care of people. So I think when this began, it was very much, wow, here's an opportunity to bring a big company and provide a lot of jobs, benefits, a, a, a real shot in the arm to the economy. But then as we drill down and think about the environmental uh, risks, and then in particular, the security risk that we've now been educated to, I wasn't thinking security risks when this first uh, came. I spoke at a rally and I really talked about the environmental threat. And then I listened to former CIA directors, Secretary of Defense, uh, our current uh, uh, FBI director, Christopher Wray, and all of these top experts with no real skin in the game financially are telling us this is a danger to our existence. And I don't believe it just doesn't, it, it stops here. I don't, it isn't that I just think it doesn't belong here. I don't think it belongs anywhere on American soil. Why shouldn't your community benefit, particularly in light of the fact that it obviously needs some, it could use an infusion of some wealth? Sure, and, and no one will argue that. We're looking for the right industry here for, you know, and the other dynamic is there are people who think this is a, a, a magic pill that's gonna end unemployment. And we have uh, one person did their own survey, not a professional survey, their own survey and found out there were from 1,500 to 2,000 jobs in this county that people aren't even applying for. Uh, I also think this, if this is built, I think there will be people from other counties who come here and work. So this isn't just a cost, uh, uh, Macosta County, you know, gain loss thing. But again, I think you have to weigh, you know, you don't dance with the devil just so that you can buy a jet ski and, and pay your mortgage and go to the grocery store. And I don't think the risk is worth the payoff here. Um, any thoughts just on the national scale? These sorts of debates are happening all over the place. They are, and we're, we're actually very proud. Uh, we f we're talking to people from all over the country who are digging in, our, our people in Mantino, our, our comrades there, and all over the country who are getting a hold of us. And people are waking up to this stuff and they're realizing what the dangers are. So, you know, we're pretty proud. We're kind of the epicenter here, and it's such a great core group of of uh, Americans, Orman Hook, who's really been the catalyst of making this all happen. He's coined the, uh, 
uh, the, the term that, you know, we're a different kind of redneck up here. And we have people involved in this that are very sharp people. They're politically savvy. They're committed. They're patriots. Many of them are strong Christians and very committed to this. So we're in the fight. If we lose, we lose. We can keep our head up, but uh, we don't plan on losing. Okay, thank you. There you you bet. <clears throat> Sounds good. Do you have animals at your chickens. homestead? Yeah, chickens? I have a gorgeous farm about three miles from here. We have 82 acres and four ponds. 82 acres. And, who who oh, mows that? It's so gorgeous. What's that? Who mows that? Um, it's. Uh, For more on how this local debate has captured national attention and even entered the debate in national politics, the presidential campaign, you can watch my TV show, Full Measure, the October 20th edition. To find out where Full Measure airs in your area, you can go to CherylAckison.com and click the Full Measure tab. It'll tell you how you can watch and the times that Full Measure is on near you. Or you can always watch anytime at fullmeasure.news. Sunday, we post the program around noon after it airs on TV. You can find it live online for free. That's at fullmeasure.news. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast and that if you did, as always, you will leave us a great review and share it with your friends. If you haven't already ordered a copy of Follow the Science, How Big Pharma Misleads, Obscures, and Prevails, that's my new bestseller. It's going to make a great gift for people you know for Christmas. I'm hearing from a lot of readers who say it has so much practical information in it for how to take back control of our health amid a very corrupted medical and scientific establishment. But before I give you the practical advice, you will hear some of the most egregious true stories about what's been happening inside our medical and scientific establishment. It involves dangerous drugs and vaccines, ethical violations, misinformation, and even crimes. But I've got the data, the goods, and the documents that back all of it up and will help you understand why it's never been more important for you to get information like what you'll find in Follow the Science on sale anywhere. Do your own research, make up your own mind, think for yourself.